Well, hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane Digital Audio School down in Montpellier, France. We hope you enjoyed your summer as much as we did. It's time to kick off our tutorial season with a tutorial about Clifix and Clifix Pro. It's the third tutorial we're making about that script because we think it's amazing. We explained previously how to set it up, how to work the basis, how to code a little bit with it. And we discovered recently we can also make snap clips. What are snap clips? They enable us to capture the position of our parameters on the devices and the mixer section of our tracks and recall these positions at any given moment during our live set. Yes, you heard me properly. Let's have a look at how this is done. So how do we set up these snap clips, these snapshots of parameters of our live set at any given moment? And how do we recall the settings afterwards on stage? Um, well, that's pretty simple. You're going to see that. So obviously you need to install Clifix. I couldn't make it work with Clifix Pro. I guess it does, but um, Clifix does it really well. So you look here, Clifix is set as a control surface. No controller is in front of Clifix. Uh, you can't use these uh, snap clips with your controller directly as an X control like we saw on another tutorial with Clifix. Um, as they are set inside clips, you'll see why in a minute. It's pretty simple. Now, these snap uh, clips to me are more interesting when used with an improvised live set, a live set where you have synthesizers and you're programming or maybe you're changing the sound of your synths on stage live, as opposed to using them with stems, with audio clips. I mean, these snap clips can be uh, used to capture the position of your effects or, or whatever you want, by the way. So to demonstrate this, I'm using the Magic Racks from Sample Magic. These are distributed on the Ableton website. They've been developed by our tutor here, Simon Cather. And I've got here a few for drums. I've got the uh, kick here. So I'm gonna go quickly through that. That's not the point of the tutorial, but here we've got one for the snares. You got different snares here. Obviously these are triggered with uh, clips here, MIDI clips, something with the hats here. I can change the type of sound, the length of the sound, all that jazz. It's great. These, these magic racks are great for improvised live sets. Now, I'm not going to capture the position of your my drums here just for uh, a clarity in this tutorial, but I'm going to capture the position of my bass settings and my lead settings. Let's hear the bass. So I can obviously mess up the sound as much as I want with these effects here. I've actually built a little interface on Limir here on my iPad to, to control these settings and search for the sound uh, using my ears only. And when I like a setting like this one, I leave it as is, and I'm going to capture it so I can recall it on stage. Now, let's do the same thing for the lead rack. That's fine. Well, let's say I like these settings. I can also capture the settings of my mixer section on my tracks. Uh, maybe have the reverb's a bit long on that one. I think it's the sprung that's doing that. Let's move the sprung somewhere else. That's it. So now I'm happy with these settings. I'm in the studio and I want to use these uh, settings on stage later on. Okay, so how do we capture them? Well, it's simple. Clifix is in place and I'm going to add a new MIDI track to my live set there. I'm going to create a new clip and rename the clip and enter the Clifix comment. So, you know, from the last tutorials, you need to put an open bracket and close bracket at the beginning of the message to enter or explain to live that this is a Clifix clip. Now, where do I find the comments? You know, where? On the manual, on Clifix manual. So there's a snap action section where you'll find these modifiers. Uh, dev are for devices, so all devices on the track. Device X is a specific device. Device X to Y are a range of specific devices. Mix are for the sands, uh, the pan, the volume. Mix Plus adds the mute, the solos, and the crossfade 
position. The mix minus takes the sands off, the mix S R for, is for the sand, and the play is the playing position of the clip or playing stages of the clips on the track, playing, recording, or stopped. That's it. So um, I'm going to use the, the normal dev and normal mix here. You, you understand quickly what the others will do. So let's finish the renaming. First of all, well, open brackets, close brackets, space, and then I need to specify which tracks which channel i need to record or i want to record well i need to count them one two three four and five these are the ones i need to capture so i'm going to enter four space item space five slash that's the comment that explains where i want to capture then i need to explain it's a snap clip so snap uh, with my uh, capital snap and then dev for devices and space and mix that's it, that's the comment. So you may as well duplicate that many times to capture many different positions during your experimentation of sound. That's it, all I need to do is trigger that clip and you're gonna see that the name will change. That's it, all the position of the parameters have been entered in the name of the clip. I don't need to mess up with that now, that's working as is. So look at what happens now when I mess up the sound of my bass. And the sound of my lead. That's it, I've messed up the sound. Now I'm gonna trigger the clip and look at the parameters. They jumped back exactly where they were when I captured them in the first place. So that's pretty amazing, right? Uh, it reminds me of Capture that came up with uh, about six years ago. Capture was um, not Capture here, not Capture from uh, Live. Capture was like a device, a Max for Live device that came up uh, years back uh, to help us to do that. But it didn't really uh, work properly. So now we're going to go a little bit further with this uh, technique. I'm going to add a new MIDI track and I'm going to, oh, just one. <laughs> I did two, sorry. Two. Right, so just one MIDI track and I'm going to rename that track Clive fix, um, Clive fix space snap, and I'm going to add a space, an open bracket, and now I'm going going to specify the time it will take for the parameters to go back to the initial initial position. I could enter this in millisecond, so 150 milliseconds, uh, up to 500 milliseconds, by the way, and I could quantize the movement adding an S and a number of bits. So one measure is four bits, and I'm going to close the bracket like so. And now I'm going to drag this clip over here. Now I'm going to mess up the sound again. Let's mess up the sound of the lead, for example. That's it, I've messed it up. Look, I'm gonna trigger the clip now. Look at the parameters. Ah, they didn't work, it didn't work because uh, the name is wrong, Freddy. Look, I've added a O oh, there, stupid me. Right, so let's do quickly now a little uh, change in this sound. Like so, and let's trigger the clip. Hopefully it's gonna work. Look at the parameters. And they've morphed, they're morphing they're morphing back to their position. So that's even smoother and uh, slightly more musical if you ask me. So it's quite amazing we could do that. So if you wanted to control this using a controller, you could. You could just uh, simply assign the clip to a controller. That's possible. Uh, let's, let's work another setting here just randomly. Let's work it out. So that's messed up enough, and let's now capture this again. Move the clip over here, and assign it to a different location on my controller. I can now recall the first settings, like so. I recall the second set of settings, like so. And jump from one set of settings to another, easily. We can go slightly further with this this technique uh, by adding a drum rack. Oh, maybe not on this track. I keep doing mistakes here. Let's come and zip that and go back to my uh, lead rack. Okay, so I wanted to put the rack here on the Clifix snap. Yeah, write it properly, yeah? You see, as soon as you don't write the comments properly, it doesn't work. 
that's it. So now I've got a rack on this Clifix Snap track. I'm going to rename the rack Clifix Snap as well, like so. Now, when I'm going to send a set of settings using these X clips, these snap clips, well, the comments is not the comments are not going to be sent directly to the racks here and to the, 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 the captured parameters. And instead, they're going to be placed on this first macro here, allowing me to move, to morph the sounds uh, live with a controller just by mapping this to a controller here, all right? Like so, right? So let's check it moves. Yes, it does properly, fantastic. So, as I said, as I'm launching one of these two clips, nothing happens. It just waits for me to move that button on my controller. Let's try that. So, so let's um, look at the controllers here, do the uh, parameters here. Let's launch the second set of controls. Nothing happens yet until I move. And look what happens when I move. And back to the first one. So I can that way play and move between two settings using my controller as I'm moving, in fact, this macro here. Yeah? Even better, look, I'm going to change the parameters using my uh, lemur here. That's it, I've changed the settings. I'm going to launch a set of parameters using the clips. And now I'm going to be able to morph between the recorded parameters, these guys, and the other ones I had just when I hit the play button of that clip, like so. Which means I can actually capture settings in real time and morph between the original settings and the ones that were in place at the moment I launched the clip. Pretty awesome, if you ask me, yeah? As simple as that. You see, it's it's damn simple to put together. It's really intuitive, I think. Uh, it's a bit scary when you look at the, the manual, but in fact, um, when someone shows you, I, I believe it takes five minutes to put it together. Now, yeah, uh, good luck with that, and uh, happy twickling and twiddling knobs, yeah? Bye.